Hello, EC Grace. I trust you're doing well. While you're at home, you're taking this time to catch up on things, have a special time with family, and maybe even if you're alone, time to read, correspond with others. But I am trusting that you are doing well and that you're staying healthy. How many of you saw Sunday if you were browsing around on TV? Uh, you know, COVID-19 has struck America because when you go to ESPN, you don't see any of the modern sports we're looking to, especially in this time of March Madness. ESPN actually had on their prime time, they offered some pretty neat events like world sign spinning competition, competitive eating championships, classic Tetris championship, dodgeball competition between the USA and Canada. And we know how much we care about that. And the dodgeball juggling contest. I'm like, wow, <laughs> look what happens to ESPN when our major sporting events are done. But anyways, I do hope you're having a good time uh, in the situation that we are find ourselves in. I know our family is coming together. We're reading the word. We're spending time in prayer. And we're just fellowshipping, playing games, and doing what we can to pass the time. But yesterday, you would have received an email from Claire. I hope you're looking at your emails. This email has an attachment of our announcements. We're going to be sending weekly announcements to, uh, to you, and I hope that that'll keep you informed and updated and engaged with us here at EC Grace. You will start receiving this, I hope, on a weekly basis. As you're reading and following our correspondence, you'll note that we're having some activities going on. In yesterday's announcements, you may have read about our blood drive. I hope that encourages you. So this Sunday, I just want to remind you, we have in place of our Wheeler Mission Grace to Humanity March event. If you remember, we had to cancel that due to COVID-19. But in place of that, we're going to be doing this mobile uh, blood drive here this Sunday, the 29th, from 3 to 5.45 p.m. I want to thank you, Anna Marie, for all your help in making me, uh, helping me get this done and <laughs> making me get this done. No, your, um, your desire to help others is very encouraging. Thanks for the contact. But listen, as we're quarantined now, we're not without the ability to serve. We're not without the ability to help others. This is a wonderful opportunity to answer our government's call, to answer the medical field's call, to donate blood where we know inventories are running dangerously low. We can be used to minister in our community by helping give life-saving blood. But remember, do not come if you have any symptoms of sickness, any whatsoever, stay at home and get well. This will be a clean environment where all federal, state, and CDC guidelines will be followed and administered by healthcare professionals. So you should have an email sent to you sometime today, uh, giving you a link from the blood center to sign up for your time slot. Please take time to get on there, sign up, and uh, get your spot in line. We will be advertising this to our community as well. And we're going to be having it on our physical church sign. You may even see, I imagine Pastor Tom may post some Facebook posts or something about that. We're also going to be sharing this on social media as an advertising event, hoping that our community will engage in this uh, as well, along with us. So please pass this along. Please share this on your social media page. Please share it to your friends so that we can maybe get... Uh, other people seeing what we're doing, encourage others, and they may say, uh, I want to be part of that myself. I'm excited that during this time, the church can still shine with a testimony for Jesus by giving uh, of themselves during this COVID-19 uh, crisis we find ourselves in. This will be an encouragement and testimony to each other and our community. So please participate in this very first Grace to Humanity event. You know, this is not what we had planned. It is not what we anticipated, but it is what the Lord has provided, something that we can do in this first 
Grace to Humanity event here at EC Grace. We're scheduled in April to serve at Faith, Hope, and Love in the next Grace to Humanity event. The Grace, Hope, and Love is a food pantry that doesn't only give out food, but seeks to bring Jesus Christ to people so that they can come to a saving knowledge of him as their Lord and Savior. But this Grace to Humanity event in April, it's yet to be determined if we're going to be able to physically participate in that. However, we have temporarily established, and you may have seen this in the previous two emails and in our announcements, a new ministry, a temporary ministry called Grace Mart. We have our own little grocery store that we've already attempted to build. This ministry will help those who may become in need here who attend here at EC Grace or those in our community. You may find that you have a neighbor in need or a friend and you can call upon your church to help administer this need to somebody. Please bring any food you may have extra or that you want to donate other than frozen items. We do not need that. That we could take and we could have uh, for this possible uh, need that may present itself. However, I'm encouraged to know that if it's not needed, what I'm praying for, I'm praying that we will have it all there and there will be no need to use it for our church or our community. And if that's the case, when we do gather together again and do our next Grace to Humanity event, which is Faith, Hope, and Love, we'll be able to show up there as we minister to Merlin and uh, his ministry that God's placed in his care with a truckload or two of food. So this Sunday, when you come, please bring some food with you if you can. If you cannot, no worries. We'll take your blood. <laughs> I mean, think about this. We are going to be able to minister to people, and God is going to be able to use us to people we don't even know, and they won't even know where it came from. But in God's uh, choice, he will administer that. So let's do this together. I want you to remind you to please refer to your announcements and to the email attachments that you receive. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to call me. I'm super encouraged by the phone calls uh, I've been able to have with you, the text that we've been able to communicate uh, and uh, your responses to me. You've been a great encouragement to me, a great encouragement to Pastor Tom. We want you to know that we're praying for you every day and that we're here for you. So please don't hesitate to reach out to us if you need us. As we come into our devotions tonight, I told you Sunday that we'd be talking about being in a storm. I'm sure many of you can think of storms throughout the Bible, and you can probably bring them quickly to uh, memory uh, right now. But tonight, let's look at coming safely through the storm. We're going to be in Acts chapter 27. So I'm going to have a drink of coffee while you turn there with our EC Grass mug. I am excited as we do this devotion to realize that God is good. No matter what the situation, he is always good. You know, if we had our way in life, we would wish for calm seas. Would we not? I mean, we'd want sunny days. We'd want green pastures. We'd want quiet waters. And we spoke about this last week. But of course, we know all too well, especially as you advance in age, that is not the way this life works. Sometimes, as we saw last week, we must walk through the valleys. Sometimes those valleys are small. Sometimes they're very deep. Sometimes they're very dark. And the calm seas we often know will turn into those long, deep, dark valleys at times. The Bible is filled with many accounts of those who are caught up in storms at sea. We see that calm seas often turn quickly to stormy seas, such as in Psalm 107. Maybe you want to go there on your own time later where the sailors were in such a storm that they were brought to a place where the Bible records they were at their wit's end in verse 27. Have you ever been in a time in life where you thought you were at your wit's end? And then, of course, there were the disciples on the Sea of Galilee. Remember, they're in the boat. The storm comes up. The Lord's sleeping. They couldn't believe Jesus was asleep and thought that they were going to perish in the storm. But tonight, as we could look at many of those accounts, let's look at another storm recorded for us. And I thank God that he recorded it for us in Acts 27. 
Here we see the story of the Apostle Paul. He was caught up in a terrible storm. The wind and the waves so beat on that ship that all the seasoned sailors, the experienced sailors, they said in verse 20 of chapter 27, all hope of being saved, they lost all hope of being saved. Yet the chapter ends with a note of triumph. I like this. In verse 44, it says, all were brought safely to land. Today, what type of storm might you be in? I know collectively that we are in the storm of the coronavirus, this COVID-19 pandemic that the world is under. You may have individual storms in your life going on right now, but collectively, this is one we all face together. I want to look tonight as believers how we can come safely through this storm or any type of storm in our life. During this in the context, in the history, Paul was on trial for his faith. And when he was faced with death, when he had a death sentence, he appealed to Caesar as a Roman citizen. He said, I want to take my case before Caesar. And that was granted him. So he's on this ship. He's now a prisoner here. He's with 276 sailors, all bound for Rome. One of the ports that they sailed from was called Fair Havens. Imagine that. But after they left Fair Havens, things turned out to be not so fair. Their ship became storm-tossed by, verse 18 tells us, violent winds. Not just strong winds, not just some gales, but violent winds. Can't life be like that sometimes? Can't we find ourselves in the times of violent winds? Things are going fairly well as we're in the port of fair havens in our life. And then it seems overnight, immediately, very quickly, things change and they change fast. And before we know it, the storm is upon us. Sometimes we don't even have warning. Sometimes we're not even uh, on a calm sea where we can see off into a distance of storm. Sometimes they raise up on us. Some storms are very small. And then others can be unprecedented in measure. We are all doing pretty well just a few weeks ago. Our economy was uh, churning along stronger than uh, many say it's ever been. Things were doing well. Unemployment was low. Cash was being spent and it was flowing. All of a sudden, overnight, we find ourselves in a coronavirus storm in this COVID-19 and we find ourselves struggling, some do. Storms, what do they do? They often cause fear. It's no sin, everyone, to find that you feel fear or that you can be afraid. Sometimes there's certain storms in life that can cause great anxiety, can cause great stress, and can even incite fear within us. Even the Apostle Paul, we read, dealt with fear. For in verse 24, he was afraid. Here's the Apostle Paul, the amazing Apostle Paul, who so many think as we look at him as a strong, courageous man, a man who wrote so much of God's word in the New Testament, one of the greatest theologians that ever walked the planet, a man of God. And yet we know even he dealt with fear. But I want to give you a few examples tonight to remember from Paul's storm at sea that will help us today. In these times of storms, we must look to our Lord God. We must look to him as our source for courage and remember a few things. Let's do that now. In verse 23 of chapter 27, I want you to go there. Remember who you belong to. It says this, for this very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong. Wow. This very night, an angel of the God to whom I belong. That's a powerful statement. The God to whom I belong. Here is God. Here is our God, our Father, the one true God. We should take great comfort and to know how precious it is, it is that during any storm or crisis, though no matter how large the wind and the waves, 
no matter how turbulent it may become. When all seemed lost, Paul reaffirms for his own heart, and he proclaimed unto them, I belong to God. Don't you love that? You see, those sailors did not know the God Paul knew. Those sailors did not know God as we know God. Many of them worshiped false gods, gods made of wood, God made of stone, gods made of uh, uh, iron. But they were all dead gods. There's only one living God, and we know him personally as our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We've been seeing Sunday, our Father who art in heaven. We know and belong to the one true God. These men were not Christians, yet all of them together were caught up in the same storm with Paul. We must often realize this. In this environment we're in today, in this crisis many call it, the saved and the unsaved are caught up together in the very same storm. But what we always see is that the difference between the unsaved and the saved is how they handle the storm. So it is with this virus that is sweeping the globe. The we who know our Lord can say, I belong to God. Take a moment and say that out loud. I belong to God. It's a wonderful thing to proclaim because we proclaim it by truth. Sometimes in the storms in life, we can lose our perspective easily as to what is important. We can get disoriented in the storm. We can be blown off course. We can lose our ability to navigate with calm. But the word of God wants us to know that's not necessary. That does not have to happen to us. We can get so wrapped up at times in fearing that we might lose what belongs to us in the storm, that we forget or minimize the most important thing. Here's something I want you to take away tonight that is extremely important, that you can claim it, that you know it, that it's a truth for you. This most important thing, which is not about losing what belongs to us in the storm, but that we belong to God who will never lose us. Isn't that beautiful? See, we are saved by his grace. We are children of the King. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are heirs of a great salvation. And we are the objects of God's love. That is what we are. And we belong to him. We can rejoice in that fact. In fact, Jesus tells us to rejoice in Luke 10, 20. He says, rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. You see, when God records your name in heaven, you belong to him. I belong to God. Rejoice that you belong to God through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's a joy that ought to take us through each and every storm, regardless of its size, regardless of its uh, weight. We can do that. In times of comfort and plenty, we often don't reflect on these things. I mean, when times are good and plentiful, we can often become complacent. We can often forget. But storms and trials have a very unique way of changing all of that. They have a unique way of bringing to the surface what is most important in our life. They have a unique way of building and strengthening our fellowship with Jesus Christ, strengthening our faith, and strengthening our trust. They have a unique way of allowing us to be used for God's glory and for his purposes in our life. And they have a unique way of reminding ourselves that I can take great comfort because I belong to God and I need not fear. So first, remember who you belong to, the God to whom you belong. Second, we need to do well to remember what you are here for in verse 23. He goes on to say, after he says, I be, uh, to whom I belong, and he says, and whom I serve. For this very night, it says, an angel of the God to whom I belong and to whom I serve stood before me. Whom do we serve? Let's never lose sight of this. This is very important. God does not exist to serve us, but we exist to serve him. We exist to serve him and to bring glory to his name so that people can see our good works and glorify 
our Father in heaven. This means that in whatever state of storm, regardless how big it is, God brings into our lives, we are here to serve him. Some of you in this crisis may be on the stormy sea, but because you may have, by God's grace, you may be blessed that your employment is still intact, that your finances are still intact, that everything is going still well for you, but you're still on that sea, but you see off into the horizon, the storm. And the longer the storm lasts, you may get closer and closer to the depths of that storm. Others may be in positions where they're closer to that storm. They're in six foot, eight foot, 10 foot waves, and they're not yet into the heart of the storm, but they're starting to feel it. They're starting to experience it. They're worrying that their jobs may be collapsing or that they may not be able to come to work. Others are knee deep in that storm. They're, they're right out in the middle of it with the full violent winds and gales assaulting them. They may have loved ones who are sick with coronavirus. In fact, today you'll see on our prayer wall, go back and look for the person we were praying for. Just today, his mother was confirmed with COVID-19. They're in the storm. They're feeling the full brunt of it. We need to realize no matter where you're at in this storm, that we are here to serve him. We're here to serve him when the days are sunny. We're here to serve him when the days are calm. We're here to serve him through all the days of our life, even now in this very stormy time of life. Here in this storm, let's notice something that we can take great uh, encouragement by and also a lesson. Not one time did Paul question God. Not one time did he challenge the Lord. Not one time did he say, why me? Why are you doing this to me? Do you not know how much I've been through for you? Why would you do this? What are you doing? Not one time did he do that. Paul simply remembered his purpose in life was to serve the God to whom he belonged. And this is where God, for the moment, chose Paul to serve. I want you to notice something. Those who had no hope, after Paul was uh, addressed by the angel, Paul began to give hope. We have the ability to give hope in these times of crisis, to give hope in every trial. Four times we read that Paul encouraged them. We see this in verse 22, 25, 33, and 34. I encourage you to go look at that. And then we read in verse 36, all of them were encouraged. Wow. There's a great principle here. We who know the Lord can use these times to serve by giving hope, by giving encouragement to others who do not know the Lord. We even can use these times as encouragement to give our brothers and sisters in Christ who may be deeper in the storm than we are. We can use these times to rise up, to be that bright light for Jesus Christ and help minister to the needy, minister to the lost, and minister to one another. As I said earlier, we're having this blood drive this Sunday. Many of our capabilities have been taken away from us. Right now, we have the, we're uh, unable to gather. We're unable to go out into the community. We're unable to uh, muster our forces and go out and serve. But that doesn't mean that we're incapable of prayer. That doesn't mean that we're incapable of a kind, loving text or a phone call to a brother or sister or to a neighbor. It doesn't mean that we can't find unique ways to reach people for Christ and to share his glory with them and to share the good news of the gospel. Just this Sunday, we have the ability to come here as a church and to witness to our community by saying, hey, we're here. We're going to do what we can. We're getting ready to come up on Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday where we're about to celebrate what Jesus Christ did for us, that he came because he loved us, that he died on the cross and paid the penalty for our sins, that he shed his blood for us and his blood covers us and washes us white as snow. Yet here we can come in as believers and we can give some blood to help somebody in need through their peril. And somehow God will use that. So I'm looking forward to those things, but I want to encourage you that you belong to God and you're also called to serve him in the storm. So remember what we're here for. Lastly, remember who is here for you. 
I love this. He says in verse 25, he says, uh, therefore, keep your courage, man, for I believe God that it will turn out exactly as I have been told. Can you imagine him yelling it above the winds? The violent winds are going. The waves are crashing over the, the bow. Keep your courage, man. Keep your courage. I believe God. I do believe God. Do you believe God? The difference between cowardice and courage is how one handles fear. Fear is natural, but how will you handle it? What will you bring to your mind? What will flow out of your heart? How much of God's word is hidden there for you to recall? Or how he'll bring you to his word to strengthen you and encourage you? See, Paul knew something, and he reminded himself and the others in who he believed. Paul knew he was not alone in the storm. Don't you love that? You see, God did something for him. He dispatched an angel to calm his fears and ensure him that he would uh, not die, that all would turn out well. The fact is no believer is ever alone in any storm. In fact, you're never alone on the green, in the green pastures on the quiet waters, or in the valleys of storms. We're never alone. You remember when Paul was in Corinth, and he was undergoing a storm of persecution at that time, and he again was fearful for his life. We read this in Acts 19, 8 through 10, that the Lord came to him, and this is what the Lord said to him. Do not be afraid any longer, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no man will attack you in order to harm you, for I have many people in the city. I love how God does much of his work through man. But here's what he wanted Paul to know. For I am with you. Isn't that beautiful? Especially in a storm. In 2 Timothy 4, 16 through 17, Paul said as he was coming to the end of his life, as he was knowing that he was getting ready to meet his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he had said, all had deserted me. And he was able to look back and make this most amazing comment based on truth. He said, but the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. At that moment, even then, when all had deserted him, he was able to make that comment about his present situation, that he would be able to also make that comment about his life with Christ. You see, the one to whom we belong, the one to whom we serve, is the one who loves us and is constantly here for us. We should take great joy in that, great comfort in that. I believe God. There are times I wish, <laughs> I truly do, that God would dispatch his angel to me that he would dispatch his angel to tell me exactly what needs to be done, exactly what's going to happen. Hey, wouldn't it be great if he dispatched his angel to me and Pastor Tom to the board and say, hey, here's what I'm doing. Here's what's going to happen. Here's what I want you to do. Have no fear. Well, he doesn't do that. But he has dispatched the Holy Spirit who dwells in me and lives in me. I do have his word, and I do have the abiding principles of his word, and I have all his promises to stand on. I believe God. Do you? There are times in our life where that may be challenged, and we have to remind ourselves. He does say this, though, even though he doesn't send me his angel. He tells me, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Do you believe that? Do you believe that wholeheartedly? He says, my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Do you believe that? Do you believe it without doubt, with certainty in your heart? He says, God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those called according to his purpose. Can you believe God for that? Do you believe, as we just saw, you're called to serve, that God has called you and that he has a purpose for you in your life? 
Even now in this COVID-19 crisis, he has a purpose for you. He has a purpose for me. He has a purpose for his church in this world. Can you believe God despite the storms, despite fear of job loss or job loss, despite having financial difficulty or material difficulty or even sickness from the virus? Can you say, I believe God? In Acts 27, we need to see something. The sailors, they saw the storm, but Paul saw the Savior. The sailors saw the rocks all around them and they saw and feared that I'm going to crash into these rocks. But Saul, but Paul, he saw the rock of ages. What rocks do you see right now? Look upon the rock, Jesus Christ, the rock of ages. You see, this storm was in the plan of God for Paul, but this storm was also in the hand of God as well. No matter what is happening in our world today, it is in the hand of God. But the beautiful thing is, so are you. You belong to him. You belong to him. And the God we also serve, who is always with us. So we do see that same uh, truth right here in the crisis we find ourselves in. I hope and pray without doubt that in the upcoming weeks or months, we will be together again. And we will look back on these times and see how God blessed us, how God used us. And I pray that God will use this crisis for his glory and accomplish what his purpose for us and the world. Let me encourage you with this as we close. Psalm 46, 1 through 3 and verse 10. God is our refuge and strength, a very pleasant help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, through the mount, though the mountains quake at its swelling pride. Selah. Verse 10. I love this. Cease striving and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Let's pray that God be exalted today and that God is exalted in our life and go right now and thank him and say, Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I'm here to serve you. And Lord, you are with me always. Take comfort in that. I'm praying for you. I miss you. And I can't wait till we get together again soon. Maybe I'll be able to see you this Sunday, Lord willing. God bless you and good night.